Hi, I'm Gene Sapikoff, the Charleston Post and Courier. I'm the college sports editor and sports columnist at the Post and Courier, and welcome to Beyond the Headlines, where we take a deeper dive into some of the stories and subjects that we've been covering here at the Post and Courier. And a reminder, well, a couple of reminders. Number one, this is being recorded, so we'll be available if you'd like to watch later on the replay or for the first time at postandcourier.com. And also, you may submit questions uh, via the Q&A function on your, on your screen. And uh, I'm going to be talking today with Danny Kelly. Danny covers sports in Myrtle Beach for the Post and Courier, and in particular, Coastal Carolina athletics and Coastal Carolina football. Danny, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you, Gene? Outstanding. And uh, we're in the midst of another really cool, really outstanding, nationally significant football season for the Chanticleers. Uh, before I uh, get started with Jamie Chadwell and the guys, Danny, why don't you kind of tell us just a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so I've uh, been at this uh, paper for almost two years now, uh, graduated from the University of South Carolina from the School of Journalism in 2018. I've uh, been in this industry for about three years, and uh, this is my second year covering uh, Coastal Carolina football. So I, I got lucky as far as, you know, they were really good last year and they're good again this year. So um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun to uh, uh, keep track of this team. So, Danny, uh, one loss for the Chanticleers this year, a tough one in Boone, a midweek loss. But, wow, they're really rolling. I mean, it seems to me like they're almost a lock for a bowl game, which would be after last year, which was their first bowl game ever, their second bowl game, and in really good shape. How, how do you see kind of the trajectory of this season from your perspective? Um, well, they, yeah, they've had a good year so far, like you said. Um a lot of it will have to do with uh, if their uh, starting quarterback, Grayson McCall, can play uh, in the next few games because I actually was just on the uh, the weekly presser today and uh, Coach Chavel said um, that there's a chance he, you know, he could play or he might not play the rest of the season. It just depends on the, you know, severity of his – if he can play through his injury. He's an upper body injury right now. Um, I mean, him not – him playing is a huge factor because he leads the nation in several categories, including passer rating and uh, yards per completion, things like that. Um, but, uh, I mean, they should, even with Bryce Carpenter as the backup quarterback, they, I think they'll, if, if he plays, uh, I think they'll beat Georgia State, Texas State, and I, I think they could win out the rest of the year. Like I said, it, 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 a, lot, a big factor will be if McCall plays, but um, I, I could definitely see them see them winning out, and then, yeah, they'll, they'll uh, play a bowl game as well. So, um, hopefully – Hopefully it'll be another good one like last year. I mean, they ended up losing, but it was still, a, you know, instant classic type game. So, Right. Gene Sapikoff, college sports editor of the Charleston Post and Courier, here with Post and Courier Myrtle Beach reporter Danny Kelly, and we're talking Coastal Carolina Chanticleers football. Danny, let's talk about that bowl situation. It's, it's kind of weird. If, if the season plays out kind of um, like it should on paper, like you said, I think with or without Grayson McCall, with Bryce Carpenter in there, the Chanticleers can probably win out. But Appalachian State looking pretty tough too. And if they do, you know, they'll be the division champ and they'll, you know, play in the Sun Belt Championship game. But there are, let's see, five bowl games, I think, that uh, a Sun Belt team could go to the Cure Bowl in Orlando, the Lending Tree game in Mobile, the RL Carriers game in New Orleans, the Myrtle Beach Bowl, of course, there in Conway, and then the Camellia Bowl in Montgomery. Let's say Coastal Carolina, you know, finishes second behind Appalachian State in the division, doesn't go to the Sun Belt Championship game, and is not the Sun Belt champion, but just has the one loss. What What are you hearing about where they might wind up bowl wise? Um, I haven't really heard a lot yet. I mean, I think I've seen projections as far, maybe the Gasparilla Bowl, or I mean, it, it would be great if they could be in the Myrtle Beach Bowl and they don't really have to go anywhere. But um, yeah, I'm not, I, I haven't looked like that far ahead yet. But I mean, like I said, I've looked at, looked at a couple of projections, I guess, um, maybe the Gasparilla Bowl. Uh, but yeah, it just really, it really depends uh, on if App State loses or not um, going forward, since they do have the, the tiebreaker. Um, they do play I think App State plays South Alabama this weekend, so that's probably their toughest game left on the schedule in the Sun Belt. So um, it'll kind of come down to that game. So Coastal's just 
praying for for a Mountaineer loss, basically, to try and get into Sun Belt Championship. Danny, I always think it's weird with these bowl games. Sometimes the the lesser bowl or the worse you do, the cooler place you get to go. Like I always think it's funny when ah oh, this team screwed up. They have to go to Hawaii and play in a bowl game or San Diego or someplace like that. Um, you know, for fans, I'm sure the Myrtle Beach Bowl would be very convenient, not that expensive. But man, if I'm a player and you're telling me I might get to go play and spend three or four or five days in New Orleans or Orlando, um, I might think that that's cooler. Um, <laughs> what do you think of that? I mean, Montgomery, Alabama, no knock on Montgomery, but it, it's, I've seen some of those bowl games. It's kind of chilly and not to mention the fact that that particular game is, is on Christmas. But uh, what do you, what do you think of that balancing out Myrtle beach bowl versus getting to go somewhere that, you know, might be a little bit more fun for the players. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I guess it's kind of a, like if they, if they get the Myrtle Beach Bowl, then I mean it'd be nice to be able to play. You know, a lot of Sean's fans will go, but obviously, you know, players will also want to play in different venues as well. So like last year they played in the Cure Bowl in Orlando, which I'm sure the players enjoyed a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it. I definitely would um, would would like to see them in the Myrtle Beach Bowl because then I could definitely get to go to the game. Um, but um, yeah, it, it it yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they definitely would like to go somewhere that's not you know, like a more of like a destination type place, like, you know, like Orlando last year, or, uh, New Orleans or something like that. Talking here on Beyond the Headlines uh, with Charleston Post and Courier Myrtle Beach reporter, Danny Kelly, who covers the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Danny, we're getting a few questions uh, submitted to us. And this one is from David. And he says, uh, with recent success of Coastal Carolina football and baseball, of course, the 2017 national champions at the College World Series, would Coastal ever consider leaving the Sun Belt to join a Power Five conference and uh, see what you think about the conference shuffles? But I, I can just say right now that they have pretty much no chance to join a Power Five conference. There's just not the demographics, TV market, and things like that that the Power Fives are looking for for expansion. And anyway, they'd be in the ACC or SEC footprint for that. And I just don't see them even slightly mentioned. But you're cer certainly seeing a lot of shuffling going around the Conference USA. The Sun Belt, what are they up to, like 16 teams now? And I mean, that's just this morning. You never know what's going to happen. Um, what do you think about conference moving around, teams jumping around, schools changing, and how that might affect Coastal Carolina or not affect Coastal Carolina in the next year or so? Um, well, recently, um, as a lot, a lot of you probably have seen, um, they, the Sun Belt recently added Marshall, Old Dominion, James Madison, and uh, Southern Mississippi, um, which is great for Coastal because then if, if they add uh, Old Dominion, Marshall and James Madison to the East division and then move Troy over to the West division, that would definitely be easier on them for traveling because then they wouldn't have to go all the way to, you know, like Arkansas and Louisiana and stuff every year. Um, and they could go to Virginia instead to play some of those teams, West Virginia. Um, and I mean, I think the Sun Belt. I mean, the Sun Belt is definitely positioning itself to become, you know, arguably, I mean, obviously the American athletic conference is good too, but, um, you know, the Sun Belt's definitely coming out as a winner during this expansion. Um, they could, you know, they can make an argument that they're, that they're the best group of five conference right now. I mean, like I said, the Americans also up there. Um, definitely, you know, getting a lot of those teams from Conference USA. And then obviously James Madison from the FCS, which they won't be here for a while because they have to go through the um, transition period. But um, yeah, no, I, I think uh, Coastal is definitely going to benefit from that. I mean, a 16 team league, 14 playing football. I mean, the Sun Belt definitely bolstered itself as far as, um, you know, uh, quality quality ads in, into the conference. I mean, James Madison has had a lot of success at FCS. Um, and uh, also, um, when you mentioning, you know, Coastal joining a Power Five eventually, I mean, if they sustain success in, in football and maybe in baseball and stuff, I mean, I mean, you never know. They could join something like the ACC, ACC, like somewhere down the road. But right now, I think they're probably going to stay in the Sun Belt just because, you know, the Sun Belt just basically just beefed up a lot. Um, so I, I think they'll be staying there for a little bit. But you never you never know if, if, you know, more teams shuffle around and it creates like a 
kind of just a domino effect. We know when Texas and Oklahoma said they were joining the SEC and then, you know, you get another one of those, um, another one of those, you know, just domino effect. I mean, you, you never know. Like you said, they're kind of in that ACC footprint. Danny, you make a great point about the proximity of being able to play teams closer to Conway. And I think that's also just so great for fans. I mean, that want to travel the road games. I think that's going to really help not just coastal, but teams throughout the Sun Belt when you get more road fan attendance and it, it just makes for a spicier environment. For game day, Danny, we're getting um, another question from Kay, who asked, uh, wants you to ask this one, answer this one. What's the most important thing a coach does to get a team ready to get the guys ready to work as a team? Um, I definitely think uh, Coach Chadwell, well, specifically, if we're going to talk about Coastal, Coach Chadwell usually has a, like, you know, mantras that he likes to use and uh, just things like that to kind of have the guys, you know, rally around and, and to get ready for a game. Um, you know, he definitely, he definitely pushes his, his guys pretty hard, but then, you know, a, a lot of people have seen, they have uh, locker room celebrations after the game. So like there's a reward. And then like another example is whenever they put up 50 points, you know, 50 burger, he gets the team, you know, burgers. If they, if they shut the other team out and give them, you know, put up a donut on the scoreboard to get, he buys the team donuts, like, you know, things like that. So it's like, the, he definitely rewards the players for for their hard work. So they, you know, they love playing for him because of that. Like, you know, they know, if, you know, if they're sweating on the field on Monday in practice, you know, Saturday night after they win a game, they, they know it's going to pay off. So um, he's definitely great at, great at motivating uh, his players from what I've seen. This is Beyond the Headlines, the Post and Courier's deeper dive into some of our most interesting subject and stories. And today, I'm Gene Sapikoff, the Post and Courier sports columnist and college sports editor, talking to Danny Kelly, who covers Coastal Carolina athletics for the Post and Courier up in Myrtle Beach. And Danny, um, you know, you referred to those post-game celebrations. Uh, some of the antics have gotten some interesting and fun national publicity. For instance, this, seeing, this season, getting a chainsaw and sawing the head off a stuffed red wolf after beating the Arkansas Red Wolves out in Arkansas. What does that do to kind of, you know, just bring the team together and, you know, make for more camaraderie, not just on the road or whatever, but just generally through practices? Um, yeah, they definitely, the players definitely uh, enjoy that. I mean, as soon as it happens, it's like all over social media. You know, a lot of the players just, they really look forward to that, you know, getting to have fun with, with getting to, you know, whenever they win. Um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's always fun to, fun to guess what it's going to be because, you know, they're going to probably incorporate the other team's mascot in some, some way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it is, it is, it is fun to watch, you know, whenever, you know, they get posted on online. Um, and I know the players definitely enjoy it. They, but, um, you know, they, a lot of the players, they're like, yeah, we, we, we get to celebrate and things like that, but it's like, it's not all, you know, it, it is fun, but it's not like all fun. Like sometimes, you know, you got to put in the work to get to be able to, to have that, that moment. Um, and, you know, a lot of that circulates on Twitter, but what you don't see behind the scenes is kind of, you know, how much work the players put in, but um, yeah, no, those celebrations are definitely some of the better ones in the, uh, in the country. And then also they have, I know a lot of teams have like Miami kind of started with the turnover chain, but now they have like coastal has like the turnover cloak, like from game of Thrones, they have, you know, get, whoever gets a turnover gets to like wear, wear a cloak on the sideline. So that's always pretty, pretty fun as well. Again, this is beyond the headlines with the post and courier and I will mention this now and mention it again later, but if you'd like to sign up for our free newsletters, that's post and courier dot com slash myrtle dash beach dash newsletters dash sign up and if you'd like to subscribe to the post and courier it's post and courier dot com slash myrtle dash beach slash subscribe and i'll mention that again toward the end of the program danny let's talk about a few specific players like you just reported and you you said you know it Maybe it looks a little grim for Grayson McCall per what Jamie Chadwell to told you on the Zoom call. But um, what makes him such a special quarterback at, and for such a younger guy, too? Um, he definitely, uh, like I said, he leads, leads the nation in a lot of a lot of categories. I mean, a lot of I don't want to say it's because of the schedule, because their schedule is not as, you know, as good as some others. But um, 
he definitely, you know, is a great, great quarterback. Um, he, uh, you know, he just, the guy, a lot of the, a lot of the players, you know, they're always, they always say um, that, you know, they're, they're, you know, they'll, they'll, they're willing to go to battle for him every single game. He's definitely just like a great leader. A lot of the players just, you know, talk highly of him. Coach Chabell always talks highly of him. Um, and then also, uh, even if, if Bryce Carpenter ends up playing, I mean, the, they said the same thing about Bryce Carpenter. Like he, like today, Silas Kelly, one of the uh, six-year senior linebacker on the team, said, you know, he's, uh, you know, one of the best teammates he's ever had. So and he, he said that of both McCall and Carpenter. So I mean, it just seems like in the quarterback room, they just have you know a bunch of natural leaders that that are willing to lead the team uh, in any way they can. Yeah, Danny, I actually had a phone conversation with Willie Korn yesterday, the co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. And he was telling me that down at Georgia Southern, that before the game um, was going on and, you know, it was clear that Bryce Carpenter was going to play. Grayson McCall was injured and Bryce Carpenter got with uh, the uh, head official uh, quarterbacks frequently, you know, have a quick conversation with officials before the game start and said, I just want to let you and your crew know that do not, blow this whistle when you see me running with the ball or don't be ready to because I am not sliding I do not slide and I think that kind of you know battle toughness really endures him to teammates um you you kind of said what you know some of the guys think of him but just as far as his football skills as a quarterback can you kind of say some stuff about Bryce Carpenter uh Bryce Carpenter is definitely a really mobile quarterback I mean he's when I, the thing about uh Coastal this year, a lot of their games have been blowouts, so uh, they kind of take Grayson out uh, at halftime, and you know you see a lot of Bryce Carpenter in the third quarter, um, and maybe sometimes the fourth quarter as well. But they they usually they I've seen them play like four quarterbacks one game, but um, yeah, no Bryce Carpenter, he's he's been there for a really long time. Um, he was like the starting him and Fred Payton rotated the starting quarterback in uh, 2019. Fred Payton plays for Mercer now, but um, yeah, no, he's been there for a long time. He's a very mobile quarterback. I mean he. He, um, I, I, I do think they're in good hands with him. Um, you know, it was definitely a really tough game last game because of this, the weather. It was just a it just downpour the whole game. But it, like the fact that he was a really mobile quarterback definitely helps um, to where you know you're not relying on having to throw the ball every play um, because you know obviously with a wet football it's hard to throw. But um, you know they just it was kind of a the Georgia Southern game this past Saturday was kind of a a uh, low scoring game punt fest at the beginning, but then they kind of just took over in the second quarter and the third quarter. Um, but yeah, no, they, uh, I think Bryce Carpenter also had, he had like a 20 something yard touchdown run. So he's definitely one of the more mobile quarterbacks uh, in the Sun Belt, that's for sure. Danny Kelly here with the uh, Post and Couriers Myrtle Beach. That's who we're talking to. He's telling us all about the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers football program. Danny, um, what do you think about Isaiah Likely, the tight end? I mean, he, he kind of came from Cambridge, Massachusetts, is quite a raw prospect. But wow, I mean, he looks like an NFL-ready guy now almost. Um, what, do you, what do you think about his, you know, season and his future? Um, he's... Uh, he definitely is going to be playing on Sundays. That's for sure. Um, you know, he's a pretty big target. He tries to hurdle a player like once a game, it seems like, um, but no, he just, he's just a huge target, very athletic. Um, the Arkansas state game, he broke like several Sunbelt and coastal records. I mean, he's just, he's definitely somebody that McCall looks him likely in uh, J Javon Hiley are the two guys that McCall definitely looks for down the field. Um, he's just, you know, a huge target. I, I really do think he could be a good NFL player. Um, I mean, he could he could get drafted first first second round. Honestly, I, I think he's like pretty high up on on some of the draft bars boards as far as uh, tight end prospects. So, I mean, he he is he is like arguably the best tight end in the country this year. Yeah, he's something else. I don't know about you, Danny, but anytime like the subject of coastal Carolina football comes up, I mean, when you're out and about and, you know, when I'm out and about I, just, you know, pretty quickly, the question of, but how long is Jamie Chadwell going to be there question comes up and, you know, he, I thought he did a great job last year of just really honestly saying, you know, what was going on and, you know, yeah, candidate at South Carolina, but this is, you know, this program is building and growing at Coastal and 
here we are. I, I think these kind of conversations are probably going to happen after most every season, the way the trajectory of the Chanticleers is going. Um, what do you think about that and how Coach Chadwell has handled that? Um, well, like you mentioned last year, whenever he was uh, in talks for the South Carolina job after uh, Will Muschamp was let go, um, he definitely, he, I mean, it was kind of like in the media that he was, you know, being considered for, but after a certain point, he was like, I don't really want to like answer questions about that anymore because he's just more focused on his own team. Um, but yeah, like you said, um, definitely at the end of this season, there are quite a few jobs he could be considered for as well. Um, I I don't know how long he's going to stay at Coastal. I mean, he could stay there for quite a long time. I mean, he just signed like a seven-year contract like last season. So, I mean, he's, he might be there for a while, but I mean, if a, you know, a really big job comes up, um, you know, he might end up taking it. But uh, yeah, no, he's definitely pretty humble as far as that goes, you know, just doesn't really like to talk about, uh, you know, other opportunities. He mainly is just focused on his own, his own team. Danny Kelly of the Post and Courier talking on Beyond the Headlines about Coastal Carolina football. Danny, let's look at it this way. You, you see how well coordinators are being paid now at, at the top level in the Power Five conferences, SEC, ACC, for instance. Would do you do you think that Jamie Chadwell would take a high profile coordinator job at a power five school if it was a good fit? This is quite the interesting offense he has, uh, which is kind of this weird hybrid of an option with with spread. In fact, I think they call it that spread option or option spread or whatever. Um, and that seems to me could instantly help some head coach that had a struggling offense. I mean, do you think he would look at an offense coordinator job or is it strictly head coach or nothing else? Um, I, I mean, I, I think if it was like a big enough school, say like, you know, if LSU were to offer him to be offensive coordinator, I don't, it would be really hard to say no to that. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think maybe, I mean, I, I think if he was, if you were offered an offensive coordinator position at a big enough power five school, he'd probably take it. Um, yeah, this, the offense is just really – it's hard to stop, really, just because of this – yeah, like you said, the spread option is just a really hard thing to defend. Um, and also, just with as many weapons as they have, it's it's hard to stop because, you know, you got uh, Jamari Jones out ready to take a pitch or Grayson could just hit uh, Isaiah Likely up the middle. I mean, it's just like – yeah, there's like three things going on at once and you have to prepare to stop all of them, um, and it's, it's really tough. But, yeah, I mean, I think – yeah, like you said, um, I mean, yeah, if a big enough power five – uh, offer is made to him. I think he, um, I think he, he could take it um, or maybe not. I mean, I, I, I don't really know for sure, but I definitely think he's qualified to uh, be a head coach or an offensive coordinator at a power five school. That's for sure. I agree with you, Danny. Um, let's talk just a little bit more about this offense to me, just a credit to Jamie Chadwell's offense and he still calls the plays, but of course he's got Willie Korn and other people helping him out with this, but a, a key to it and just what really makes it shine is that these Sunbelt teams that they play every year have seen it. It's not catching them by surprise and yet it's still successful. You know, what can you say about that? Um, yeah, I guess just, you know, he's, he's just always keeping people, uh, you know, I guess he kind of trying to kind of tries to, uh, you know, just uh, catch you off guard every once in a while, or just, you know, they just, they just have such a big play ability that you know it, it really is difficult to stop it's just like I said um there's kind of like three things going on at once like, like I said you have to be prepared for a pitch or a you know if, if McCall is going to find highly or likely which it, it it's almost it, it's really hard to defend Isaiah likely that's I mean he's just a huge guy who's got you know great hands and Javon Hiley is just really athletic as soon as he gets the ball he's, he's pretty quick in the open field I mean right now uh Reese White is out their uh, second leading rusher uh, he's going to be out again for this weekend but uh Shamari Jones is still pretty good uh, in the backfield as well. I mean, he's been battling, battling turf toe all season, but um, he's, he's been playing the last few games. So uh, that's good for them. And also Braden Bennett, he's a freshman. Uh, he's great in their run game as well. Um, you know, they just have a ton of weapons and it's just really like, you kind of know, kind of know what you're going to get, but you still have to like stop it. it it's, it's, it's just really tough when you have that many athletes on the field. Danny, you wrote in the summer uh, a really nice piece about, you know, recruiting uh, personified and a really good player they got from Florida. 
that you know was one of the highest rated recruits or maybe the highest rated that Coastal's ever gotten in football. I mean, are, are you hearing that, you know, recruiting is being amped up even more and that they're getting into more, you know, high schools and living rooms than they ever did before with the success that they've had the last couple of seasons? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, they definitely uh, ramped up the recruiting. That's for sure. Like, uh, like you mentioned, uh, Matt, Matthew McDoom from Florida committed. He's, you know, a great, great player. And then also they have Bryce Archie coming in, a quarterback from Georgia. Um, he's also a really good player. Uh, I think he was a three, three star, uh, recruit, like the highest quarterback recruit they've gotten because I mean, Grayson McCall was only like a two star quarterback, which is kind of hard to believe, but, um, it's, uh, yeah, no, they've been getting a lot of like really, you know, highly, like the highest rated recruit they've gotten. They definitely like lead the Sun Belt as far as recruiting goes. Um, so they've, they've definitely, I mean, obviously it's tough to compete with, you know, the Clemson's and Georgia's and Florida's of the world, but, um, they're definitely holding their own and. Uh, it seems like they're leading the Sun Belt in, in terms of uh, recruiting strength. That's for sure. Also, this is kind of a newer thing in college football, but I think it's a credit to Jamie Chadwell and his very fine staff, including Chad Staggs, the defensive coordinator and, and others. But, you know, they didn't lose a lot of key players in the transfer portal last year, despite all that exposure. And I'm sure some of these guys that we've been talking about could have gone elsewhere, but what do you think about that and what a credit is to what Coastal Carolina is doing that they would want to stay there rather than maybe go to a power five school? Yeah, that's that. I mean, yeah, it, it is, it is amazing how many, how many guys ended up coming back and the only two guys they lost were because they went to the NFL, like Teron Jackson plays for the Eagles. Now uh, one of the best defensive players I've ever had and CJ Marable was on the bears roster. I don't know if he's still on the bears roster, but he got signed by the bears like right after the draft was over. Um, he was a great running back for them last year. But other than that, I mean, like, yeah, like you said, like no one, no one transferred. They all wanted to stay. So, um, and a lot of the, like, they have like 13 six year seniors. So a lot of them wanted to come back for the extra, uh, extra COVID year they got. So, I mean, they have a lot of experienced players and you can definitely tell just like, you know, by the way they've, you know, won a lot of their games this year that they've played with together a lot. And it's just, yeah, it, it honestly, I, I am very shocked that like no one transferred. It's just, I guess it just, speaks volumes of the culture around that program because they all wanted to stay. I keep bringing up things like, you know, transfer portal and maybe Jamie Chadwell looking at different jobs, but I just want Coastal Carolina football fans to know these are great problems to have at the Sun Belt level. This is what you want. You want people to want your coach. You want people to want your players. Uh, just, just one more thing as we kind of wrap up here with Danny Kelly on Beyond the Headlines he, Jamie Chadwell has been, benefited tremendously from keeping some of these guys on his staff together, like Chad Staggs. I know he went to Furman, you know, after Charleston Southern, but he, he's, he's worked with him for a long time and, you know, Willie Korn, et cetera, there's others. How valuable has that been to kind of have the key components of the staff be together? Yeah. Like you mentioned, they had a lot of success when they were at uh, Charleston Southern, um, and uh, also at North Greenville as well. Um, that's kind of where uh, he, I think that's where um, he, he first had Willie Korn, you know, get on his right. staff. Yep. And, you know, Willie, uh, Willie Korn, former, former Clemson, Clemson uh, quarterback, um, you know, he, he definitely knows what he's doing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's just, they've kind of, you know, gone to a few different places and then have, have had success in like all of them and kept the core together. So that's, yeah, that, that it, it, you can definitely tell that they've been coaching together for a long time because, uh, you know, the defense is usually pretty solid. It's uh, the offense obviously is clicking too. So it's just, it's, yeah, they've got a good core together. Um, they also added uh, Rod Wilson, who was on the, um, the uh, Chiefs Super Bowl winning team as like a special teams assistant. So, you know, when you add, a, you know, a guy with that type of experience into a coaching staff that's already, you know, well put together, it's just, it, it definitely uh, is a loaded coaching staff, that's for sure. Well, Danny, thanks a lot. This has been Beyond the Headlines, the Post and Courier's deeper dive into some of our most interesting stories and subjects. And let me just uh, give you a couple of heads up things here. If you'd like to sign up for free newsletters, it's postandcourier.com slash Myrtle dash beach dash newsletters dash sign up and if you'd like to subscribe to the post and courier post and slash myrtle dash beach slash subscribe 
For Gene Sapikoff, college sports editor of the Charleston Post and Courier, I'd like to really thank Danny Kelly, our excellent Myrtle Beach-based reporter covering Coastal Carolina athletics and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, please join us next week for Beyond the Headlines. <laughs>